Welcome back to the good, the bad, and the pure evil. When we left off, the Chimer Rouge of Pol Pot had taken Phnom Penh and evacuated the people with lies of a US bombing and lies that they could return in three days. All this was tactical to demolish capitalism in Cambodia, demolish Sihanouk's power, demolish the CIA network, and to facilitate Khmer Rouge dominance over the country. So here we go, April 20th, 1975, three days after Phnom Penh essentially fell, Paul secretly arrived to the empty city. He went and based himself in the railway station along with other Khmer Rouge leaders. The station was tactically chosen as it was easy to defend. In May, they moved HQ to the once finance ministry building. Paul declared his idea, agriculture is key to the nation, building and for the national defence. He believed Cambodia needed to develop quickly or be vulnerable to the Vietnamese domination. So the goal, it was to reach 70 to 80% farm mechanism in five to 10 years then modern industrial base in 15 to 20 years. Paul wanted the farming population to work harder than ever before. Khmer Rouge wanted a fully self-sufficient Cambodia. China, though, would give substantial food. Sari would go to Beijing after taking a farm pen, and he negotiated 13,000 ton, 13, tons of weaponry for Cambodia. Khmer Rouge declared at the National Congress meeting that no foreign military were allowed bases on Cambodia soil, which was an issue for the Vietnam, who had 20,000 troops in Cambodia. To smooth out kinks, Paul, Chia and Sari went to Hanyan to propose a friendship treaty between the two. For a short time, this actually worked. Tensions did ease. From Hanyan, Paul secretly went to Beijing. Here he met with Mao and Deng. Mao warned Paul against repeated mistakes, advising him to avoid the drastic measures. From here, Paul went to North Korea and met Kim Il-sung, returning to Cambodia in July or August. To look legit, Paul organized a parliamentary election of sorts. One candidate was allowed in every constitutionary, apart from Pham Pen. Once formed, the parliament met for all of three hours. In 1975, the Communist Party's control of Cambodia was very much kept a secret. A special National Congress meeting on April 25th to 27th seen Sihanouk nominated head of state. He was in Beijing and Painan Yari but in September came back to Cambodia. Once home, Sihanouk settled into his palace. He traveled in October to address the UN General Assembly to promote the, no the new Cambodian government. And in November, he went on an international tour. In September, Khmer Rouge decided currency led to corruption, which undermined their effects, so no wages were given in Demo democratic Kampuchea. The population was expected to go without pay. If they refused, well, they faced punishments and sometimes executions. Because of this, the term slave state was used. People forced to work for no pay equals slavery. Same month, September, Paul announced all farmers had a quota of three tons of paddy or unmilled rice. 1975 onwards, if you were living in rural cooperatives, you were reclassified into three groups, full rights, the candidates, and the disputers. Full rights were mostly poor, and they got full rations, could hold political posts in co-ops, and could join the army and communist party. Applications of this new system was strict and wasn't fair and came into place in different areas at different times. Khmer Rouge militia regularly killed people deemed as quote bad elements end quote. 
these they executed with explanations like, quote, to keep you is no profit, to destroy you is no loss, end quote. Those killed were tossed in the fields to become fertilizer. The new committee ruled the population with a 10 day work week and one day off, a system from the French Revolution. Neo neologisms came into effect and everyday words were changed to encourage a more collectivist mentality. Cambodians were told to speak as we and not I. Working in the fields were sectioned by sex. Sports was a no. You could only read what the government gave out and your movement was restricted. You could only travel if the Khmer Rouge said you could. In 1976, a cabinet meeting declared the country was now to be called Democratic Kampuchea. The constitution would also assert state ownership of production, declared equality to men and women and the rights and obligations of all citizens to work. It also outlined the country would be governed by a three-person presidium, one of which was expected to be Sihanouk. But Sihanouk wasn't really feeling the new government and in March he resigned. Paul would try and try to get Sihanouk to reconsider, but there was no going. Sihanouk would request permission to go to China for medical reasons, but was denied. Instead, he was locked down in his palace with all the luxury he could want. With Sihanouk's removal, it signified the end of the idea Khmer Rouge was a united front. Paul announced the start of the Socialist Revolution allowing the country to move towards pure communism. The new presidium had Paul now the country's prime minister. He now would be publicly known as Paul Pot, with a fake biography as no one knew him really. Paul's allies took the two other positions. They were Chia as president of standing committee of the National Assembly and Kiu Safam as head of state. In September 1976, out of nowhere, Paul stepped down as PM, but still had power, and in October, he returned to his former position. This, though, was thought to be a smokescreen tactic to the Vietnamese, while he purged the CPK of those suspected of being sympathizers to the Vietnamese. Khmer Rouge wanted rid of the working class, and in 1977, they renounced communism, calling themselves revolutionaries. Cambodians were now Kampuchians, and they legally recognized the language was Kampuchean, with Chinese prohibited. Paul started irrigation projects across the country. Many of these failed because the workers had little or no experience. The standing committee decided to link villages into one cooperative, about 1,000 families. A communal kitchen was introduced so the commune the commune ate together and not in their homes. Forgery and hunting were not allowed as it was seen as a one person activity and not groups. Summer of 1976, children over the age of seven couldn't live with their family. Instead, they lived communally with Khmer Rouge instructors. Co-ops didn't produce a lot of food, mainly because of the lack of motivation from workers and the fact the best workers were on irrigation projects. Fearing repercussion, they lied, saying food production quota was met. But like most lies, it was found out. And by the end of 1975, Paul acknowledged the shortage in about 75% of the country. But party members, they had great food, brothels, medicine, and access to imported luxury items. So Khmer Rouge classified people on religious and ethnic backgrounds. Paul's leadership had a policy of state atheism. Buddhist monks were deemed social parasites and in a special class. A year after Khmer Rouge Civil War victory, the monks were sent to manual labour in the middle of nowhere for co-ops and irrigation projects. Many smallish rev revolts broke out against Paul's government. Some villages also rebelled. In February 1976, bombs were dropped destroying a munition depot 
and Paul suspected senior military figures, but couldn't prove it. However, he did have many officers arrested. September 1976, party members were arrested for conspiring to overthrow Paul's government with the Vietnamese. Day by day, the arrest grew. To justify the internal crackdown, assassination attempt claims were made. Party members were accused of being spies for the CIA, KGB and Vietnamese. They were tortured, threatened and forced to confess, having these so-called confessions read out at party meetings. A secondary school was converted into a security prison called S-21. As purges started, the number sent here increased. The first half of 1976, 400 were sent. And the second half, it was up to 1,000. By 1977, 1,000 a month were being sent to S-21. In S-21, near 20,000 were killed in the Khmer Rouge period. Paul Pot would never visit the security prison. Middle of 1977, levels of violence massively increased across the democratic Abuja. In rural areas, it was the young cadres enforcing what they thought was the government's will. Peasant cadres tortured, beaten and killed those they did, that they just didn't like. Many cadres ate the livers of their victims. Unborn babies were ripped out of the mothers to use as coon crack ta uh, talismans. The CPK Central Command knew of all this and did nothing to stop it. Many Cambodians tried to flee to Thailand and Vietnam. Uh, autumn 1977, Paul declared purges were completed and CPK's own figures had from four to 5,000 party members liquidated as enemy agents or bad elements. 1978, a second purge. Tens of thousands killed for being Vietnamese sympathizers. CPK members who spent time in Hanoi were killed along with their children and in their family. Paul Pot announced the slogan, quote, purify the party, purify the army, purify the cadres, end quote. So to us looking in, Cambodia and Vietnam looked friendly. After Vietnam was unified in 1976, Cambodia sent congratulations. But behind their closed doors, the relationship was cold and getting colder. May 1976, negotiations for a formal border between the two failed. China would become Cambodia's international body. Vietnam sided more with the Soviet Union, so China saw Paul as a defense wall against Vietnamese influence in Indochina. Mao pledged a billion dollars of military and economic aid to Cambodia, including a grant of $20 million given immediately Chinese military advisors and technicians to help with projects like the airport. But suspicions between the countries was high and China had little say to Paul's domestic policies. It did have a strong say to Cambodia's foreign policy and successfully pushed the country into better standings with Thailand and open communications with the US. Mao died September 1976 and Paul praised the Chinese leader and declared a period of mourning in Cambodia. November 1976, Paul sneaked into Beijing, looking to retain alliances with China after the arrest of the Gang of Four. He toured China visiting sites linked to Mao. China were the only country to keep their embassy in Old Phan Penh. All other diplomats lived on the boulevard Mon In Vong. The street was completely barricaded off. They couldn't leave the area without an escort. Their food was taken to them, and Paul saw what he was doing as a guide to other revolutionary movements to follow. He budded up with the Marxist leaders from Burma, Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand, even letting Thai Marxists to have a base along the Cambodia border. The death toll really varies. It's believed to be between 1.6 to 1.8 million although figures as low as 1 million and as high as 3 million have been suggested. 
December 1976, Cambodia was advised for war with Vietnam. Paul believed Vietnam were looking to expand, which was seen as a threat to Cambodia. April 30, 1977, Cambodian units entered Vietnam, attacking many villages, killing hundreds of civilians. Vietnam ordered its air force to bomb Cambodia borders. September 2nd, divisions of Cambodia East entered Vietnam's Thai Nhi, destroying villages and slaughtering all that came in their path. December, Vietnam, Vietnam sent 50,000 troops into Cambodia. Diplomatic relations between the two were formally broken. Fighting was strong and on January 6, 1978, Vietnam withdrew. Paul gave the order to his military to aggressively attack before Vietnam could. They launched raids on various Vietnam villages. The Vietnamese Politburo now saw it necessary to get Paul out of power before the Cambodian military got stronger. Military training camps for Cambodian refugees were created. The Cambodian government braced for war. Plans for a personality cult were drawn up. The plans revolved around Paul and was based on Chinese and North Korea models. The thinking was such a cult would unite the population. Large photos of Paul rolled out in communal halls, with paintings and busts of Paul too. But the cult was all talk and never really took off. Failure of troops in the East to fight off Vietnamese had Paul suspicious of loyalty, so he purged them to S-21. Aware this order would result in certain death, they rebelled against the Khmer Rouge government. Paul sent more troops to combat the rebels and ordered them to kill all those suspected of helping or hiding rebel forces. This would be the bloodiest time under Paul's rule. Rebels fled to Vietnam, joining a community of anti-Paul Pot exiles. Early 1978, Paul's government became friendlier with foreign countries like Thailand to strengthen defence against Vietnam. Although one of, the, of Cambodia's cheerleaders, China, did not send army to Cambodia as fears of an all-out war with Vietnam and Soviet Union was high. Over in Vietnam, plans to fully invade Cambodia were being done up. December 1978, the Khmer National United Front for National Salvation, or KNUFNS, was launched, and this group was of Cambodian exiles. September 1978, Paul flew to China to meet Deng. Deng condemned the Vietnamese aggression, but said Khmer Rouge had a part and were too radical in policies and the troops were a bit too wild in their actions. Paul came back in October and switched to a defence tactic, using landmines to stop the Vietnamese. He warned to avoid direct confrontations and instead adopt guerrilla tactics. November 1978, CPK held the 5th Congress. Mock was appointed third rank figure, just behind Chia and Paul. After the Congress, government members Von Vett and Kong Safal were arrested and sent to S-21, starting another round of purges. Christmas Day 1978, Vietnam launches full-scale invasion. December 30th, Crack Tea was taken. January 3rd, Stung Trevin was taken. On January 1st, the main force entered Cambodia, heading for Phnom Penh. Cambodia's defences failed to slow or stop them. When it was looking likely that Phnom Penh was going to be attacked, Paul sent Sihanouk and his family to Thailand, with the entire diplomatic corps following. January 7, Paul and others went to Persat and on to Batamambang. Mok would remain to oversee its defences. Chia ordered all S-21 inmates to be killed before the Vietnamese captured. But the Vietnamese army were already within miles of S-21. As they approached, officers and soldiers guarding the city fled. January 
Vietnam, Vietnam installed a new government under Sam Rin, composing of Khmer Rouge, who had fled to avoid purges. The Vietnamese were seen as heroes, saviors, but soon hate grew towards them. Khmer Rouge turned to China for help. Sari went and spoke to Deng, who said to continue a guerrilla war and to establish a non-communist front with a high role given to Sihanouk. China sent Vice Premier Bia O to Thailand to negotiate shipment of arms to Khmer Rouge through Thailand. China also sent diplomats who went and met with Paul before they were withdrawn from, for security reasons. February, China attacked Vietnam, hoping this would have the dirt troops drop the Cambodian invasion to fight them instead. The US also gave support to Cambodia, as it did, as did other non marxist Asian countries, because of the fear in cahoots with the Soviet Union. January 15th, the Vietnamese got to Sisovan. Paul, Chia and Safan went to Palin and then on to Tazan where they met Sari. On February 1st, they had a conference going against Dang's United Front idea. Vietnamese entered Tassan, the leaders just avoided the capture. July 1979, Paul had a new HQ, which was called Office 131 at Mount Tom. Now he wanted to be called Fem. September 1979, Khmer Rouge created a new United Front the Patriotic Democratic Front, bringing all Cambodians against Vietnamese occupation together. Group members stopped wearing the all black getup and Paul began wearing jungle green and later safari suit. October, Paul ended executions. In November 1979, the UN General Assembly voted to recognize the Khmer Rouge delegation as the legitimate government of Cambodia. December, Safan replaced Paul as Prime Minister. This allowed Paul to focus on the war. September 1979, Masoons had Khmer Rouge troops trickle back into Cambodia. Many young Cambodians joined the Khmer Rouge forces in hopes to get the Vietnam army out. With Chinese supplies, Khmer Rouge rebuilt its military and by early 1980, a, by the mid-80s, it was claimed 40,000 troops were active in Cambodia. From 1981, Paul looked for support among the population in hopes it would win him the war. August, he travelled to Beijing to meet Deng and Sihang. Deng pushed for Sihanouk to be head of state, a request the monarch reluctantly agreed to in February of 1981. September, Sihanouk, Safan and Son San released a statement announcing a formation of a coalition government. December 1981, Paul and Chia dis uh, dissolved the Communist Party, a decision made with little input from others. Some believed this was for show and that the truth was they were going underground again, although this doesn't seem to be the case. Paul suggested a new movement to replace the party, but nothing more came out of talk. CPK's standing committee was replaced by a military director. With the shift of ideal, ideological collective eating ended, ban on individual possessions lifted, and the children once removed from their homes were returned. In 1983, Paul went for medical check in Bangkok, where he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma disease. December 1984, the Vietnamese army launched a huge attack pushing Paul back to Thailand. Here he built a new base which was called K-18 outside of Trat. September 1985, Paul resigned as commander-in-chief but continued to hold power. That summer he married a woman named Mia and they had a daughter a year later. He went to Beijing for treatment for his cancer, returning to Cambodia summer of 1988. That year, anti-Vietnamese fractions held negotiations with the Phnom Penh government. Paul feared it was the wrong time as the party hadn't gained enough popularity back.
The fall of the Berlin Wall and then the Cold War had a knock-on effect for Cambodia. With Soviet no longer a threat, the US and others didn't see Vietnam's takeover of Cambodia as an issue. June had various Cambodian factions agree a ceasefire overseen by the UN with the formation of a new Supreme National Council to help implement democratic elections. Paul agreed to the terms. November, Sihanouk returned to Cambodia. He would state Khmer Rouge leaders should be put on trial for their horrific crimes. When Sam Pham came to Phnom Penh, he was beaten by a mob. Paul made another HQ near Pai Lin. He called for Khmer Rouge to double down efforts to get support. The Khmer Rouge became extremely confrontational, expanding across West Cambodia. Massacres of Vietnamese settlers were done. Hun Sun's forces would carry out military activities with UN peacekeepers unable to stop them. January 1993, Sihanouk went to Beijing, stating Cambodia was not ready for elections. Khmer Rouge formed a new party, Cambodian National Union Party, to take part in elections, but in March, Paul said they were boycotting the vote. Again, Paul moved to HQ, this time to Pham Chat. Safan joined him there after withdrawing from his Khmer Rouge delegation. May 1993 elections, the National United Front for an Independent, Neutral, Peaceful and Cooperative Cambodia, or F-U-N-C-I-N-P-E-C, won 58 of 128, 120 seats. Hun Son's Cambodian People's Party came second. Son Do wouldn't see the defeat, so Sihanouk negotiated a coalition between the two with two prime minister systems. The new national army launched an offensive against the Khmer Rouge. By August, it took Pham Shat with Paul fleeing to Thailand. He'd go on to An Long Beng, which was, a, which was overrun in 1994. So he relocated to Kabal An Su Ang. In September 1994, Paul ordered the execution of a British, French and Australian who were captured by the Khmer Rouge. July 1996, mutiny in the Khmer Rouge. And in August, Sari and two others announced they were leaving the movement, taking loyal troops with them. 4,000 soldiers left, half in the force. End of 1996, the Khmer Rouge lost almost all the territory it had in Cambodia. Paul's health began failing. He had aortic stenosis and no longer had access to his cancer treatment. He then had a stroke and was paralyzed on the left side. Eventually, he needed daily oxygen. June 1997, Paul became suspicious of Song Sen and so ordered his assassination. Khmer Rouge cadres killed Sen and 13 of his family and aides. Ta Mok worried Paul would do the same to him. So Mok rallied tra uh, troops he trusted, telling them Paul had betrayed the movement. Fearing the troops, Paul, his family and bodyguards fled on June 12th. Paul would also become sick and weak during this flea, uh, travel and so he had to be carried. Mock's troops would eventually catch them. Paul would then be placed under house arrest. Sam Fan and Chia would side with Mock. Late July, Paul and three Khmer Rouge commanders were brought before a mass meeting. Paul Pot was sentenced to life in prison. April 15, 1998, Paul Pot died in his sleep of a heart failure. A journalist, Nate Taylor, was present and claimed Paul killed himself when he heard Mock was going to hand him over to the US. He said Paul died after ingesting Valium and Chloroquine. He was put on ice after a failed embalming and three days later he was cremated in a traditional Buddhist funeral. 
And that is the story of Paul Potts. Like and subscribe to my YouTube and podcast. And join me next time for the story of John McBride, the Irish Republican and military leader. He was executed by the British government for taking part in the 1916 Easter Rising in Dublin. Until then, this was the good, the bad and the pure evil.